showing a bunch of, you know, outtakes of the, you know, worst accidents in ice skating. And I thought, oh, my God, I never really even thought of ice dancing, what have you, as being a dangerous sport. And yet you see what these athletes are going through. So my next guest, you know, the Olympics probably brings up some 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 bad memories, frankly, for him. Uh, Terrence Kosakar was a medic during the Vancouver Games. And he was actually the guy who came to the aid of the Georgian loser who passed away. And Bob Mackin is an investigative journalist, and Bob has written Terrence's story. And it is so in-depth. And thank you both for coming in, by the way. Uh, Bob, this was a great story that you wrote and super complex and like a million rabbit holes. And Terrence, um, okay, so you're working as a medic the day of this accident. Can you just take us back a little bit to what your role was that day? Uh, that day I was the, uh, you know, first responder. I'd worked for the 2010 uh, games uh, three years leading up to uh, game time. And uh, I was to be uh, make sure that our all of the Olympic athletes from around the world got the highest level of care. So when you got the word, when you realized that there was trouble, were you the first responder literally to go to this guy's aid? Well, you know what happened uh, <clears throat> earlier in the week? Uh, Nodar had crashed two other times during training runs. So, you know, uh, we're prepared for his third run. Where is he going to crash? And, you know, it was, it was pretty awesome because he had made it through the 50-50 where he had crashed earlier in the week. And we're all standing at the bottom watching. And, yeah, you know, you made it right on. We're watching him try to finish his run. And, uh, you know, he came in hot into uh, through the Thunderbird into corner 16 watched him hit the roof and immediately I know what's going to happen he's got to head towards the finish line and uh, respond to this crash so I was I was running towards the finish line uh, looking for debris ice coming out of the outrun that's when I witnessed uh, Nodar come out of the track and uh, collide with a solid steel post so uh, yeah I mean, it was such a tragedy. The guy was 21 years old. Yeah, just a boy. And I know that that's what you're trained to do. But when it happens, I mean, you're just acting, right? You're doing what you're supposed to do. How then did that incident affect you? Because I believe you were told, don't talk about it. That's right. Absolutely. A few minutes after uh, we pronounced Nodar um, uh, deceased at the polyclinic, fancy suited man came walking in and uh he just had said you know we don't talk about this to anybody not your family not your friends not the media co-workers nobody and you know when you're sitting there after uh, such a um, incident like that uh you're not really listening anyways you're trying to relive like what did i do wrong like what more could i have done the uh did you, know, you blame yourself you couldn't have blamed yourself well absolutely it's a natural response. You know, there's a boy who's uh, not going back home to his family, and uh, I feel like I didn't do my job. So I didn't know, um, <clears throat> you know, how to manage my feelings. Uh, the next day it was back to work. Put your mask on and get back to work. Okay, well, I mean, and we know first responders need to deal, you're trained to deal with horrific situations, but you internalize stuff like that. I mean, how did this young man's death then impact you going forward? Well, going forward every single day of the Olympics, things for myself uh, just got worse and worse and worse. And, you know, we're not trained on how to deal with self after such an accident. It's always uh, train, 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 practice, routine on the patient, save the patient, help the patient, but nothing uh, over my eight years as a firefighter and a medic on how to deal with my feelings afterwards. So as the games went on day after day, um, things just got worse. My anxiety levels were up. I wasn't sleeping. I was uh, stressed out and the the amount of guilt and shame that comes over you, you don't know you should talk. You don't understand uh, what's going on within self. At the same time, I'm still ha- I'm having these flashbacks from my childhood and my teenage years. All those years of, uh, you know, it's been a long journey to get to, be, to where I was. But um, I'll tell you what ended up happening. Uh, one hour after the Olympics were over, I couldn't take uh, my feelings anymore, the confusion, and I tried to end my life. Oh, my God. Um, Yeah, it wasn't until four days later I went to talk to my doctor and said, Hey, why is it that I risk my life to protect and serve the public? I'm a family man. I play on two hockey teams. I'm a paid-on-call firefighter. Why, Why the heck did I just try to end my life? He says, I think you have PTSD. That's the first time I heard that word. I said, What the hell is PTSD? What kind of crack of 
his diagnosis is this. And you know what he says to me? He says, you're going to need to see a psychologist to get diagnosed. She doesn't come here to Whistler for the next two and a half months. So in the meantime, take some of these, take some of these, and take some of these. So now are we talking about going down a rabbit hole of addiction? Oh, now we're talking about numbing the pain, numbing, uh, escaping our reality with the uh, antipsychotics, the copious amount of sleeping pills, and the worst of the worst, Percocets. Uh oh. Oh, buddy. Well, uh oh. At the time, wasn't uh oh. Is yee haw. <laughs> at what yeah. point? What was your hitting bottom moment? Bottom moment was five years later. I had um, went through. Um, I lost my family of thirteen years because of your own stress and just, PTSD just 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 all of it just burning all the bridges uh, getting hooked up on all the meds uh, not thinking clearly um, being directed in all the wrong directions um, I've had to check into treatment twice I fought WCB uh, for two and a half years I uh, lost my job as a fireman and a medic and um, you ended up on the downtown east side I did yes yes three years ago I ended up homeless on the downtown east side Oh, my God. Rob, <clears throat> yeah. We are having um, quite a dramatic conversation with Terrence Kosakar. Uh, he is the executive director now of an organization called Camp My Way, which is supportive of veterans and other people with PTSD. He is a former first responder. And Bob Mackin, I swear we'll get you in in this next segment, Bob. Bob is the investigative journalist who told Terrence's story uh, and brought this to light. Yeah. We're going to have more with both of, them. both of them when we come back. The latest AM 730 traffic in 60 seconds. This is the Linda Steele Show on 980 CKNW. You're a badass. Huh? You are so badass. I love it. You just, you walked me like to the end and didn't allow me to because sometimes Bob will tell you, I'll go, oh, I'll give you the whole two hour story. So thank you for you know what, jumping and me this through. It was good though because what you're saying is so powerful and so dramatic that I'm sure people are like, wanted to go in to save on foods but stayed in the car. <laughs> they want to hear you're the awesome. rest of what you're saying, yeah. right? So you're doing the right you're doing a great job. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. Having a fascinating conversation with a guy named Terrence Kosakar. He's a former first responder, a medic who attended to the young uh, Georgian loser who lost his life here at the Vancouver Olympics. And Bob Mack, an investigative journalist who told Terrence's story. I mean, first of all, Bob, how did this story come to you? Well, uh, I covered uh, the Vancouver Olympics for the better part of a decade and uh, wrote an e-book in 2012. It's called Red Mittens and Red Ink, the Vancouver Olympics, so the only book of its type. And uh, when that uh, tragic incident happened on February 12, 2010, it uh, just ground everything to a halt, uh, even us in the media. One of my colleagues uh, from Sun Media, Rob Longley, was up in Whistler at the time, covered that as breaking news. I was at my desk wrapping things up in North Van, getting ready to get downtown to the main press center. It was going to be a very long day because it was opening day. There were protests, there were press conferences, there was the ceremony, and then everything seemed to stop. Uh, when that happened, uh, got the first report, started to get onto the story for my editor, started to look actually on YouTube. It was on YouTube very quickly because everything in the modern Olympics is a broadcast, not only with the athletes and their final training runs, but so were the broadcasters, making sure the broadcasts were top quality and someone somewhere along the way put the broadcast quality uh, edition of that online very quickly so I saw it very quickly uh, as the news was breaking uh, and it was uh, just numbing just it was like a punch to the gut and I thought to myself what about the people that were there doing their best to try to uh, help save a life and uh, several years ago, Terrence started to do his uh, fundraising and awareness raising events, uh, flipping the tire, putting his chains on, flipping a tire, a uh, very uh, interesting visual image and metaphor, and started to tell people that he was the medic, but wasn't telling his full story at the time. I got in touch with them, and it wasn't the right time for him at the time, and uh, we sort of went back and forth uh, until last fall. He said, finally, I, I want to tell my story. Uh, I want to tell everything about my life, and especially tell my story about and what happened that day. It is an amazing story. Bob wrote it in two parts, and you can find it at thebreaker.news. So, Terrence, then, did the IOC 
ever come to you and say you're suffering from PTSD and this is how we can help you? Absolutely not. <clears throat> no, they did not. It wasn't until uh, 2012 when I got out of uh, detox and treatment. I was up to, well, just uh, uh, January, beginning of January 2012, I w had to check in to a Vancouver detox because I was up to taking almost uh, 45 Percocets a day. Oh my God. And inducing uh, a lot of crystal meth and cocaine at the time. Um, I finally got my vision back <laughs> uh, when I checked into a treatment center, started the uh, ball rolling with WorkSafe BC. And uh, when I got out of treatment, I said, you know what? I think I should uh, send a message to Mr. John Furlong and let him know what the heck's going on here. At the end of the day, has the IOC ever accepted any responsibility for what it should have done? It should have reached out to the first responders to offer them support, both at the time and going forward? Um, I, I would, you know, it's a, it's a negative response. They've uh, battled with uh, uh, Van Ock. Um, everybody kept trying to say, you know, we're not, we're not a... We're not at a committee anymore. Everybody tried to put it off to the next guy. And year after year, I begged and pleaded that my family was about to become homeless. I just need some help. I'm still trying to battle WCB to prove that the way I'm living right now stemmed from the games. And uh, they, everybody just kept putting me off, putting me off. Which is outrageous. So, I mean, the upside of this story is I'm looking at you. You look healthy. You look clear-eyed. Yeah. You look happy. Yes. Uh, your life is together. You're now running a camp for people who are suffering from PTSD, which, as you know firsthand, what it feels like and how it can debilitate you. What is your advice for anyone who's listening right now, maybe, who's suffering and not being supported? Well, I think um, I, I definitely don't have any advice, but I would suggest and plant this seed into the people's minds that uh, post-traumatic stress is not a mental disorder. Post-traumatic stress is a, is a physical injury. So we've been uh, misguided for many, many years, and uh, it's very important that we bring more of uh, more knowledge and understanding about the effects of uh, post-traumatic stress and who, who it can affect. Uh, but if you are struggling right now and having some challenges with your life, uh, just understand you're not alone. This is natural. And to manage your day-to-day, -day, I would suggest, uh, uh, A, uh, finding it deep within your heart to find forgiveness um, for yourself for, for self and start to uh, you know forgive the people in the past because the way I look at it is uh, these things that have happened I'm grateful for uh, we wouldn't be where we are today so uh, very grateful and uh, find some time to learn how to do some meditation some breaths exercise and nutrition yeah all important things and Bob yeah. Mackin did you ever reach out to the IOC for this story did they ever comment yeah, I talked to uh, the International Olympic Committee, but they referred me to the Pyeongchang 2018 Organizing Committee. They said it's the responsibility of the Organizing Committee for the medical program. Did not hear back from the people at uh, Pyeongchang 2018. Uh, did talk with Dr. Jack Taunton, who was the Chief Medical Officer of Vancouver 2010. He told me that they did have a mental health uh, component within their overall plan, and they did have counselors at some of the venues, but we didn't have, uh, as, as Terrence tells a story in my story, a uh, situation where they actually uh, intervened and encouraged him to uh, actively uh, go and get the help. Um, there, there uh, is a situation uh, within the IOC that uh, they do remember this incident. They remember it at every Olympics, but uh, it's something that, that caused a lot of grief within the IOC and uh, within sport in general. Uh, Terrence Kosakar, yes. I'm glad that you're doing better. And thank, uh, you. thank you for coming in and telling your story. And Bob Mack and great storytelling. And again, you can find that at thebreaker.news. Thank you both for coming in. Thank, thank you. you.